Italy and the supercar. It's impossible to separate one from the other. The most powerful and the most exquisite automobiles coming from the land of art, passion, and of course, an undeniable addiction to horsepower. On this episode of Rides, it's off to Italia for the first in-depth look at what some would say is the most super of all supercars on the road today. With only a few thousand made and sold to date, it's one of the reasons why dreams exist. It's the Italian machine that has set the standard for a very select group, and it's being made before our very eyes. This is Rides. <laughs> You flash your headlights and these people move out of the way at 180 kilometers, 200 kilometers, and it's incredible. Start the engine and just feel it rumbling and it just growls at you. I see a lot of testosterone. You don't have any trunk space, you don't have any cup holders. It's, you know, literally like engine and a driver. It's like really the beast. It's a beast bred for both beauty and strength. If you don't own one, you've seen them in your rearview mirror but only for a split second. And even then, you knew it was a Lamborghini. Lamborghini is the king of exotics to me. My boyfriend traded me for a Lamborghini. <laughs> I understand after driving in it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> it's amazing how there are only a few Lambos, but there are a lot of stories about them. The first Lamborghini I drove was Mike Tyson's. Uh, I was about nine years old. I just learned how to drive stick shift. Once you sit in the first time in your life, when you feel acceleration, it's like, it, it's just, it's just crazy. These Lamborghinis are in Santa Monica, California, all getting ready for a jaunt called the Running of the Bulls. It's an annual road trip, an American celebration of an Italian legend. And it's that Italian part that a lot of these owners are into, knowing that their car comes from a place where a great deal of heart goes into every handcrafted ride. A lot of passion, you know. Uh, that's one thing cool about the Italian manufacturers. Everything the Italians do in life, they really uh, pour their heart and soul into it. And I think it shows, shows in the cars. So now we make our way from Southern California to Santa Agata Bolognese the home of a certain factory, a certain museum, and of course, a very certain bull. Lamborghini Automobili is the place that honors and builds, with the Lamborghini Museum and factory standing as symbols of both the past and the future. Since 1963, the plant has turned out only a relative handful of cars, each one in its own way, a work of art. Today, this entire plant is dedicated to one thing, handmade supercars. And the newest big bull in the stable is this car. It's a ride that some call perfection. Others call it by its name, Murcielago. With a $273,000 price tag, its 48-valve V12 engine hits speeds of over 200 miles per hour. The Murcielago was designed by a relative newcomer, Luke Donkervolken. I went to Porsche, I went to other famous car companies, I went to Ferrari, uh, and I never imagined coming to Lamborghini because it was all, always this mythical company uh, that you don't know exactly where they are. Um, and the first time I crossed the, the, the gate, it was actually to work here, and I couldn't believe it. I was really, I was, I, I always thought I was going to wake up, and it was not real to be here drawing, uh, making a Lamborghini. And the Lambo he made was the Murcielago, a hit of a car that quickly spawned a roadster prototype. We showed in Detroit as a concept car. Um, not sure if people would want to accept uh, now a car which was so uncompromising. The result was so positive, the, the feedback, that we decided to, uh, to basically uh, go for it. 
And so now they're going for it, building Murcielago Roadsters. So if ever there was a Lambo to follow through assembly, it would be this car. And with all of the leather, the forged engine parts, the hand-built body, the chassis, and the rest of the supplies fully in stock, it's time to build a new Murcielago Roadster. The carbon fiber shell on its tubular steel chassis combines for a lightweight but extremely rigid body. As it's rolled onto the official assembly line, it'll be hit with everything from wiring, braces, suspension, an Italian leather interior, and a state-of-the-art powertrain. The first stage of the assembly involves hooking it up to a rotisserie. Another preliminary move is all about protecting the finish. And it's not an ordinary run-of-the-mill paint job. The shell comes pre-painted from Milan, and you can choose from 20 stock colors. Next, the plumbing begins. Brakes, fuel lines, and any other installation that can only climb on board at this early stage of the build. Other early arrivals include pieces and panels that will work to either deaden the sound or keep some of the heat out of the passenger compartment. Because with the car being a mid-engine model, that thing, inches from your back, will be a hot and heavy V12. Like a Formula One racer, the underside of the Lambo is built for aerodynamics. This is because at high speeds, the airflow underneath the car can actually cause lift. Not a problem when you're cruising the freeway at 65 miles per hour, but it's a big problem when you hit the German Autobahn doing 180. This crew has to be careful. They're handling a very expensive piece of art, with the quarter panels and the rear bumper each coming in at 10 grand a piece. With prices like that, it's easy to see where the term supercar came from. Creating a supercar is one thing. Creating one with this much history and mystique is yet another animal, especially if you're the one designing the car. I remember always uh, the cover of this Lamborghini Portofino and there was the title was Are You Man Enough to Drive This? And this is, this is all about Lamborghini, is that uh, Lamborghini, you don't drive them, Lamborghinis let you drive them, and, uh, but you have to be good enough to drive them. To many Lamborghini owners, there's really only one man who's good enough to drive them. His name is Valentino Balboni, and there's no doubt that he is part of the mystique of this car. While we'll get into his line of work a bit later, we will say this about the man. He probably has the coolest job in the entire automotive world. And the ongoing build of our Murcielago Roadster? Well, it's time to take the bull by the horns and move it along. Back with the running of the bulls in Southern California, this pack of Lamborghini owners gets ready for their group trip up the coast. We want to hear even more about them and their rides, but before that, we have to return to this beauty's problem. She claims she was part of a very interesting swap. Um, I'm an actress on Nip Tuck. I play a girl uh, named Kimber Henry, and I was last year traded for a Lamborghini. My boyfriend traded me for a Lamborghini. <laughs> and so that's why Lamborghini invited me out. I understand after driving in it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> just get in, forget about the world. No cell phones, no pagers. Just get in and enjoy life. Just feel the road and be one with the car. And I like to go a lot faster than he does, so we have to, we have to kind of meet in the middle somewhere on that. They look so cool, you might forget how fast they are. Begging the question, how fast have you gone in your Lamborghini? I've only driven about 100. Uh, 140? Yeah. So you probably didn't know that. No, I didn't. That's a new one for me. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, the fastest I've been is towards Vegas, 160 miles an hour. So if an average car makes that trip in six hours, how long does it take in a Lamborghini? Three and a half hours. 
we made some stops. Fill up gas. <laughs> uh, last year we had a Candy Apple SB with about 600 horsepower, and we did 187.5. Since everybody near a Lambo has amazing tales of speed, we might be ready to examine the major league. Checking in with that man named Valentino Balboni. Having spread the question throughout our California brigade, it's time to ask him. Uh, I think 345 kilometer hour. Now, for those of you who are about to run out to your car dashboard so you can calculate a conversion, don't bother. Your speedometer doesn't even come close to having that number on it. Uh, this was uh, Mosellago on the German motorways. It's a nice feeling, it's a beautiful feeling. Driving 215 miles per hour on the German Autobahn in a two ton rocket. You see, Balboni is a test driver. Being a test driver is something. Being a test driver at Lamborghini is something different. He's much more than a car tester for me. He's, he's, um, he's the person that um, links the past to the future. Well, the past and the future are both here at Lamborghini, where the museum shows history while the factory creates history. One handcrafted car at a time. And of course, the history of Lamborghini starts back when nobody knew the car, but a lot of people knew the man. He was a farmer turned businessman who put his heart and his soul into a dream. The dream came true, but not without a lot of ups, a lot of downs, and a lot of hard work. In his lifetime, he saw everything from the birth of mass produced automobiles to state of the art supercars. This innovator was a determined individual who knew what discriminating drivers wanted, simply by knowing what he wanted. His name was Ferruccio Lamborghini. Ferruccio Lamborghini is, uh, was actually a farmer with uh, a lot of good ideas. Good ideas like selling air conditioners back when those machines were just in their infancy. He also made a lot of money by, well, as Balboni tells it, by taking part in a little thievery. After the war, he went stealing military vehicles, removing the engine, and building tractors for the farmers. And this is the way he started his business. And now, even a decade after his passing, it's amazing what a farmer and a few stolen tractors have built. So here, the shop is about to enter its fifth decade of handcrafting some of the most incredible supercars in the world. From start to finish, from rear to front, it all comes together here, in a place that is part science lab, part sewing shop, part engine factory, but of course, 100% Lamborghini. Sometimes it might seem that it's all about machines in this high-tech workshop, but of course what it's really about is people. Everyone here is both highly trained and highly motivated, and while certain areas require an assembly line of workers, there's nothing assembly line about the product, with only a handful of Lambos coming out of this shop each and every year. I like work because it's a very interesting uh, work and there is a good car. Everywhere you look, you see parts being prepped for our Murcielago Roadster. And these parts are as identifiable as trademarks. A glance in one direction, there are those famous scissor doors from a Lambo. Not far from there, vents are fitted and put into position for the next big step. Elsewhere on the premises, work continues on a front bumper, a $14,000 piece of carbon fiber. Yards away is a 100-liter fuel tank, part of a 12-cylinder system that is sure to include a high-octane gas guzzler's tax when sold to any U.S. Lambo fiend. Further and deeper into yet another area of the shop, you'll find a steering column that's getting the business, a unit that will hold the key to a Lamborghini. And that key will turn in a new generation of Lambos. 
just like the keys that once started three other models of Lamborghini. Three names that are exclusive and legendary. Names that paved the way for the car we know today as the Murcielago. Today, much of the legend of the Lamborghini is essentially based on three groundbreaking cars. Models that put the company on the map and then went on to reinvent the map. The cars in question? The groundbreaking Miura that debuted in the mid-60s. Miura was an absolute pioneer of a road car that took Lamborghini from promising newcomer to serious top contender. Spanning both the 70s and the 80s, the Lambo to beat was the angular and muscular Countach. The shape was a riot of creative genius, ignoring any previous rules of car design. It's a ride that some say actually started what's known today as the era of the supercar. And the car that defined Lamborghini in the 90s? The sleek and powerful Diablo, inching closer to luxury while retaining the radical. Diablo kept the company competitive, even when the competition by then could probably be counted on one finger. All three of those models were pure Lamborghini. This is a car where um, you, if you are one second uh, not concentrate, you feel all your nerves and the whole body for, for 10 seconds or, or more. You have to, um, to push yourself to the limits uh, and you still, you know that the, the, the weakest point, the weakest uh, link in the chain is not the car, it's you. Make no mistake about it, the workers in the Lamborghini factory have just the opposite thoughts when it comes to their contribution to the build. All of these workers are specialists, and in this area of the shop, they happen to be specialists about brakes, about calipers, and especially about safety guidelines. Because these things are gonna have to stop a car that loves traveling at speeds deep into the three-digit range. Over in this region of the factory, it's all about leather and the many ways in which it can find its way into and onto a deluxe Lamborghini interior. The shop uses the highest grade Italian leather available, vat dyed and brought together with a bold baseball stitch. Highlighting the very seams that a lot of upholsterers would rather hide. Nearby, it's craftsmanship of another sort with the construction of carbon fiber parts, handmade pieces that need to be both lightweight and strong. With carbon fiber being used for so much of this car, we're reminded that it has become the new tool in this modern age of supercars. In fact, it's also an application that is put on one of the arch rivals of the Lamborghini. A little car known as the Ferrari. The Ferrari came from a car builder named Enzo Ferrari. And Enzo's car is one that has a long history with the Lamborghini. In fact, before he was making cars, Ferruccio Lamborghini was driving a Ferrari, bringing us to the clutch of a certain Ferrari. It was a clutch that would prove to be of historic proportions. He bought a Ferrari because uh, at those time was the car to, to have, was the car uh, representing uh, I mean, a status symbol. <laughs> and he was always complaining uh, with the clutch of his Ferrari. So one day during inspection at his car in Maranello, he met Enzo Ferrari. And, Enzo Fer and he was complaining with Enzo Ferrari about his car. And Enzo Ferrari told him, you, will, you can't complain with my cars because you are a tractor driver, you are a farmer, and uh, you have not to complain. And uh, he, he was very upset about this story, and he told him, I will make my own car and I will show you how the clutch must operate. Well, years later, Lamborghini showed Ferrari and the world more than just a working clutch. He also showed everybody a serious contender in the elite world of high-end automobiles. 
when he built this first production Lamborghini, the 350 GT. Back with the build, we return to our wheel assembly. Spindle by spindle and rotor by rotor, the project is clearly coming together. A car this powerful is going to need some pretty sizable brakes. And the braking system includes ABS and four ventilated discs. And once there's a quartet, we'll be one step nearer to creating permanent all-wheel drive moving along one high-tech and state-of-the-art Murcielago Roadster. The interior of this Roadster is both extreme and exclusive, with the leather upholstery going for an asymmetrical look, a modern appearance where the left seat will be different from the right. Everything will be accessible to the driver, with the factory employing a design known as pilot-oriented, meaning if you're in the driver's seat, you're in a very cool and precise kind of cockpit. Meanwhile, back at the carbon fiber room, the crew prepares the center console for the next major step, a procedure that also requires many yards of batting. The console has been covered with resin and layers of carbon fiber, but it will take a couple more important steps to make the piece solid. Now comes the vacuum fitting where all of the air will be removed from the atmosphere surrounding the console. The absorbent batting will take care of the excess resin, and the lack of air will force the layers of carbon fiber to bond together. Once the vacuum fitting has sealed the deal, it's onto a stage that is about as big as it looks. We head into a monster of a tank known as the autoclave. The autoclave is both extreme heat and high compression, a chamber that basically cures the fiber surface. It's a don't try this at home procedure that moves us one step closer to a completed Murcielago Roadster. To be a supercar, you should be three things. You should be exotic, you should be powerful, and you should be expensive. An extra bonus that really helps, be Italian. With Ferrari, Ducati, and Maserati within 25 miles of Lamborghini, we are visitors here in the very heart of horsepower. Here, this is uh, the country of the engines. Coming to Italy to design a car, uh, knowing what we know about car design, you can forget all about it and just uh, you are uh, basically fighting another, against another culture of car making. Lamborghini is the best. Lamborghini, Lamborghini. Lamborghini. yes. Best. Thank you, thank you, thank you, it's the middle lira. <laughs> and while Lamborghini's neighbors have a lot of pride by way of having the shop in the region, the definition of pride comes from the workers at the plant. This is a crew of specialists who don't rush things, especially their work. No, no, we don't want. I mean, we, our main purpose is to keep uh, exclusivity and to keep, uh, you know, the car very exclusive. Don't make uh, too many cars. People are very proud to do and to make this kind of product. People like Guido. He's a machinist and he's in charge of the crankshaft. Uh, in fact, uh, 23 years working uh, in uh, Lamborghini. Guido readies the crankshaft for the mammoth task of the day, putting together the 12-cylinder engine for our Murcielago Roadster. He starts out by inspecting the milled steel crankshaft. And now that it's been inspected, it's ready to find a home. As prep work starts on the halves of the engine block, the edges will get a better fit once the flashing is removed with an air file. And since it's an $85,000 engine, there's nothing wrong with smoothing out the irregularities on the outside of the block as well. Really 
Soon it's time to bring the two together, and the first stages of the block assembly are underway. With the crank in place, the next task is all about the installation of the 12 pistons. It's 12 bits of precise work for 12 heads and 12 arms of sheer force, building an engine that is the hands-down favorite of a certain test driver, the engine with a dozen cylinders of power. Well, the best engine is uh, for sure a 12-cylinder. This is the most complete engine. The typical exotic sport engine is a 12-cylinder. When he arrived, Luke quickly learned about the love this place has for its V12. With Valentino Balboni, when I was introduced to him, he told me, oh, uh, you're the, the engine bonnet designer. Uh, the, and I said, no, I'm designing the whole car. I said, yeah, uh, we do the engine, you do the dress. And uh, it's exactly what it's all about. Next, it's all about taking the camshafts from raw, forged steel to Lambo perfection. And when this cam is working in concert with the rest of the engine, well, you can forget the radio if you're a real Lamborghini driver, because the only music you're gonna wanna hear is the song coming from that engine. Um, Lamborghini is 12 cylinder, not eight cylinder. 12 cylinder, musica, musica. The way it sounds, the way it is balanced, you know, and uh, you can get a lot of torque, a lot of power. 12 cylinder is perfect. Before long, the camshaft receives some miking. This is a process that happens at almost every step, with a different micrometer for each task. By miking, the workers can measure to make sure the machine did its job. And since the Murcielago has a twin overhead cam, four camshafts need to be checked for our upcoming ride. I'm, I'm a guest here, and uh, the engine is the, the main business. Um, I'm making an auditorium for the 12-cylinder orchestra and nothing else. If an engine is an orchestra, then this would be the string section, the cylinder heads. After an hour of deburring and a quick acid wash, the cylinder head moves on to meet up with a cool little camera. An arthroscopic camera checks for fractures and irregularities in the metal. And there's yet another set of checks and balances as the cylinder head temporarily meets up with the valve covers. that the cylinder heads and the camshafts have met up with the block, it's time to prep the motor for the next phase of this engine build. In this area, the V12 goes through pressure checks and cam timing. The valve covers go on, now protecting the four finely milled cams. And that's just one way of saying that this 12-cylinder orchestra is almost ready for its premier performance. But first, it needs its work of art intake manifold. But not until it gets checked out. Dress rehearsal, the dyno, hooking up engine to computer and checking out all of the mechanical elements on this power plant. Lamborghini specialties, such as the torque and the horsepower. To nobody's surprise, the test was a complete success. And now, it's time to introduce this engine to its new home.
One of the newest Lamborghini supercars is nicknamed the Baby Bull. Its true title, the Gallardo. With a 500 horsepower V10 reaching speeds just shy of 200 miles per hour, it makes you wonder what this baby business is all about. Gallardo on the segment where it's located is is a extraordinary car, I would say. It drives so easy, and with this uh, new technology applied on a 10-cylinder engine, gives so much torque and so much power that makes a car so easy and, and uh, fun to drive. It's like, uh, it's like a go-kart on the road, you know. Small dimension are uh, uh, good, and I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to drive. This little sister has a lot going on under its baby bonnet. This Gallardo is a really compact base, and having four-wheel drive, a ten-cylinder, two occupants in such in, in less than four meters thirty, it's in theory impossible. Um, and I'm always amazed still now how we made it because uh, because it is. Um, it is so difficult to get all those components together to have right ergonomy, to have the right cooling, to, right, to have traction, propulsion, everything. It, is, it, is, it was quite difficult and uh, um, it could only be easier for the future to adapt that flat platform. Gallardo is the car which is basically allowing us to think about the future. Every line of cars we do at Lamborghini has to be um, um, successful. We are a small company, which means we can't afford to do a car which, uh, which wouldn't sell. And the second thing, most, more important than even that, is the, 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 the image uh, of the brand. The brand Lamborghini is something we have to, to respect strongly. So we can't just enter in a segment of the market for the sake of, of doing one, of doing a Me Too car with the name Lamborghini in order to sell cars. This would be doing more damage to the whole company than just uh, not doing anything. We're not thinking about product when we're talking about Lamborghini, we're talking about the brand. And this is the only way you can go back to the spirit of Ferruccio, where he was, he was not uh, somebody that wanted to produce a car, he wanted to produce a spirit. And that spirit is alive and well in the state-of-the-art Gallardo. was to say, I'm not happy with the products from another brand, I'm going to do them myself. And this, this arrogance, but at the same time, this, this incredible courage he had by doing this is what we have to keep to, to, to go further. For $100,000 less than its big sister, you get a baby that will behave, because the $275,000 Murcielago is a lot to handle. The Gallardo is a car which allows people to have to drive a Lamborghini without having to adapt the lifestyle uh, to, to the car. Uh, the Murcielago forces you to adapt your daily use to, to the car. It's truly nice to know that this 500-horse toddler will behave. It forgives you. The Murcielago doesn't. Well behaved or not, both cars share more than just the Lambo name. It has to be uncompromising, extreme, and Italian. To have true knowledge of all things Lamborghini, you have to know that most of the car names have a direct and personal connection to the astrological sign Taurus. We have the bull because Ferruccio Lamborghini was born on a Taurus sign. Zodiac sign. And the story started with a Miura, uh, started with a Espada, Islero, Yarama, Uraco. They are all name of bulls because he was connected beginning with uh, with uh, a friend of him, which was a Spanish. That Spanish friend was Don Antonio Miura. 
Don Antonio Mura was actually a breeder, and he, he gave his name to his uh, uh, bull breed, which is called the Mura breed. And um, he basically used the Murcielago bull um, to, um, to reproduce to, with his Mura bulls. So basically, uh, he created a mix between Mura and Murcielago. And I, when I designed the car, which was interesting, I used a lot of the formal language of the Mura to put on the Murcielago. And the design of the Murcielago borrowed from more than just the Mura. I wanted to, to inspire myself from the from the um, the design language of the of the Mura, and I mixed it with some um, the architecture of the Kuntach. The Kuntach had had this really strong puristic architecture, and by mixing the two, I, I wanted to go back to to what for me were the icons of the Lamborghini, and. Uh, by mixing this, I didn't know actually that the name Murcielago uh, was associated with Mura. So it's an interesting thing that the history um, gave uh, right to this mix of, of DNA in the, in, the, in the design of the cars. Now, just to complicate matters, the word Murcielago doesn't mean bull at all. The Murcielago means um, bat in English. And it is, it is quite interesting because uh, the bat is a bit, uh, uh, um, you know, this creature from the night that you don't know, always know, you don't, you don't, uh, you're not familiar with it, it's a bit mysterious, it's a bit, and at the same time it also has wings and the, the Murcielago does have this movable wing, so it really fits to that. And the name game continues with this next Lambo icon, the Countach. Our development engineer went to Bertone to see the first model, which was a wood model, and it was a Countach. When Bertone presents this model in Torino, uh, un operaio, Countach. And our engineer asked, what does it mean, Countach, because I don't know this word. And he explains that this is an expression of wonder, of, uh, I mean, something that is astonishing. And he took the, that expression and he named the car like this. When you see the beautiful girl, it's ah, fantastic. The cottage is same, fantastic. Calling a Lamborghini fantastic. That leads us to ask what the Italian word is for understatement. As we witness the assembly of a new and rare Murcielago Roadster, we see that it will share the stable with two other bulls. Of course, the Murcielago Coupe and the baby bull here at Lamborghini, the new V10-powered Gallardo. Meanwhile, activity is about to commence in Southern California. A pack of Lambo enthusiasts are eager to begin the running of the bulls, a yearly jaunt that brings together a select crew of car owners. You know what, out of all those uh, performance cars, you know, I'm DV7 owner, Aston Martin, you know, this is like something completely different, you know, you can't put them in like the same basket like Porsche Ferrari, this is like, it's like really the beast, you know, it's like uh, completely different characteristics than any other car, it's just, you don't have any trunk space, you don't have any cup holders, it's, you know, literally like engine and a driver. Returning to Italy and the construction of our Murcielago Roadster, this V12 costs $85,000 and weighs 1,200 pounds. It will hit 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds with a top speed of over 200 miles per hour. The more we learn about it, the more we understand why there are quite a few around here who feel that when it comes to this car, the engine is everything. Because it's a roadster, this car is going to need some extra support. So in comes a custom designed carbon fiber engine cage. It's all custom, from this $2,000 windshield to this unique engine cover. Designer Luke Donkervolk didn't merely want to remake the coupe into a roadster. He wanted to rethink the car to give it its own personality. The engine cover proved to be one of the biggest design challenges for this open car. When you talk about open cars, you always, you always fall into this, this cliche 
um, of those those vintage cars. I wanted to uh, inspire myself from um, uh, Calatrava, the architect who did this museum in Valencia, uh, from the stealth bomber, the same thing that inspired me for the Murcielago, but I wanted to go even one step further and, and doing, doing it even more geometrical. This piece is the most distinguishing change as the car goes from coupe to roadster. With counterbalancing weights and state-of-the-art hydraulics, those signature scissor doors remind us that they weren't designed that way for fun. With the doors being so long, the upward swing is something you want when you park next to someone and you'd like to get out. They started with a Countach. Countach was the first car we had with a, with a scissor door, I don't know how do you call it, I mean, with a, with a system of a door like this. Yeah. And will be, will be always, uh, let's say, uh, a status, uh, I mean, an uh, exclusivity of Lamborghini. With the car getting closer to completion, it needs to get around a little easier. So temporary tires are put on, saving four places for a soon-to-arrive set of wheels. The people around here clearly take a lot of pride in their hard work, and they know they have stiff competition when it comes to this high-stakes, high-priced world of European supercars. Uh, Ferrari is uh, something bigger than us, we are smaller than Ferrari, uh, but uh, for this reason I think uh, we put uh, much more uh, passion in our, uh, in our cars, uh, because they are, we build uh, less cars, and so it's all uh, handmade, uh, and uh, we put a lot of passion, and I think that uh, the, our is the best car. Without altering the extreme features of the car, this ride will have the option of mounting a soft rooftop. But like all supercars of this kind, it'll be designed for temporary use only. For example, when it's raining. And one more thing, that softy isn't recommended if you plan on hitting 100. More testing, this time steering and wheel alignment. Okay. The rims are aluminum alloy with dimensions of 8.5 inches at the front and 13 inches at the rear. This Roadster will have permanent four-wheel drive. With independent front and rear double wishbone suspension and self-adjusting shock absorbers. If you want something with more than the standard six-speed gearbox, for a mere $10,000 extra, you can get an E-Gear with its Formula One inspired paddle shifter. Since this car is checking out fully and in every way, it's almost time to take it into the dyno booth for a thorough and final testing. It's said that the new Lamborghini era started in 2001 with the Murcielago Coupe, continuing on with the arrival of this new Murcielago Roadster. And speaking of an arrival, as the gang back in California gets ready to have their running of the bulls, they're not fully prepared for a little surprise that Lamborghini has waiting just for them. So finally, this bull is getting ready to rage. But before the big event, it's going to need to get branded. Lamborghini has, um, has always been, like everywhere in the world, the challenger, the outsider. Every, every part of the body, of your body touching the car, gets, gets some uh, sensation, some uh, reaction, some feelings. Your, your hands, your back. Our new Murcielago Roadster has checked out on the dyno, and from the looks of things, it's all good. 
it won't be long before the ride is taken out for a test drive. And as anybody in this region knows, it won't be just any test drive. The car is getting delivered to this guy for the run of its life. We have actually clients that send their cars from Hong Kong, from, from, uh, from Morocco, from South Africa to have their cars driven, tested by Valentino and then having them back. So while we're getting ready to run our bull, the Lambo owners in California are eager to get their bulls on the road. The bottom line, these folks are ready to run. But first, a surprise. They're unveiling the first production model of one of the most anticipated Lamborghinis ever built. The Lamborghini Murcielago Roadster. And while we've already been studying this gem, it's a brand new sight to these Lambo fanatics. With this import, sporting a $15,000 paint upgrade. So, with this new roadster added to the herd, it's time for these bulls to run. When you really push it, it's literally like, you know, you're blocked in your seat. You know, it's like, uh, I flew once with Blue Angels in F-18. You know, the takeoff was pretty much, uh, you know, actually, it was a little bit more gentler than acceleration in this one for the first couple of seconds, you know, because it's really like, just slams you down, it's really amazing. Back in Italy, it's also time for this legendary test driver to grab the keys to our new Lambo. I always read about him, and uh, um, to be the first time driving with him in the Lamborghini I designed was for me uh, a dream. I never, I mean, it, it, let's put it like it's science fiction, it couldn't have happened. It was, uh, it, this never happened. Valentino Balboni drives Lamborghinis. And he's been doing just that for over 30 years. If that's not the coolest job, what is? I'm sure that the way he drives, um, he, he didn't study physics at all, that's for sure. Because he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything about gravity, about, uh, about uh, friction. If he knew what he was doing, he wouldn't do it. How legendary is he? Well, he's taken every make of Lamborghini and he's tested them right here on this simple slab of asphalt. And after all these years, everybody around here knows the name of the road he tests on. <laughs> Officially, it's a, it's a public road, but it's called Balboni Highway. So, as the running of the bulls begins in a place far, far away, back in Italy, Valentino Balboni takes off. story goes something like this. A beautiful but ferocious fighting bull named Murcielago had such heart. The matador just had to let him live. And where did Murcielago go from there? Well, wherever it was, we all know one thing. He got there real fast.